Welcome to God is Open. I'm your host, Christopher Fisher. Today on God is Open, we are going to be talking about Calvinism. Calvinists do not believe their own theology. And we got plenty of data points for this. We're going to cover at least two in this episode, one that's brought up on Trinity Radio and one that was brought up in my discussion. Uh, Ricky Gantz, uh, Ricky Gantz, who I have a video critiquing, uh, he showed up in the, in the text of one of my conversations with La Ron the other night, and uh, he started making some interesting claims, which betrays the fact Calvinists do not believe their own theology. But we'll let Braxton Hunter and Tim Stratton talk real quick and uh, see what they say. Just flip to it and uh, already have my answer, how I, how I handle it there. Um, but... I was going to go through a lot more of those. Let's not do that, but let's just point to one that seems really strong. Okay. And that is Acts 4, 27 and 28, which says, Indeed, Herod and Pontius Pilate met together with the Gentiles and the people of Israel in the city to conspire against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed. They did what your power and will had decided beforehand should happen. So the Calvinist reading of this text says, Look, there are individual persons named... And an action that they took, basically what happened to Jesus, and that all of this was done by the power and will of God that he decided beforehand should happen. So, now again, we both have the answers to that. Um, uh, but the point is that uh, here, you know, you, a Molinist answer to that was you could say, look, um, yeah, God actualized a world of free creatures where that ended up happening. Right. Um, yet they still had libertarian freedom in the midst of it. But a simple foreknowledge view of this could just say what, what was what they what God planned that would happen is the crucifixion of Jesus on the basis of his knowledge that sinful man would would do the things that sinful man does. But it didn't have to be Herod and Pontius Pilate and all these kind of things. They libertarianly freely acted in that way. But on first reading, like you said, and I may have lost you. Are you still there, Tim? Uh, yeah, I'm here. But but the, the, on simple reading, it looks like it's saying, look. All of these things were causally determined in exactly the way they played out, such that nobody had any libertarian freedom. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna pause right there, which is a, a debate point that happened in the Will Duffy Tyler Vela debate. They're on this, and Tyler Vela thinks that this is the be all end all. He thinks that this is divine determinism of all things. That this is this is their their thought process and pattern. It can't be that God does do some things god's plans are not being thwarted and tyler Vaylor said oh the answer's in the greek that was his big sticking point oh if you turn to the greek it means my my reading of this text is true and no one else's which is not how language works it's not like how language functions calvinists fundamentally don't understand the use function uh how language operates a language operates based on context. Context determines meaning. Words are used loosely and have a variety of meaning. Phrases can be used in different senses, uh, hyperbolically, uh, facetiously, tongue-in-cheek, uh, woodenly literal is an option. Uh, just a generality is an option. There, there's idioms and turns of phrases that you find throughout language. So militantly claiming that the Greek means his theology is true it is idiotic. Um, we're not dealing with rational, honest people when we're dealing with, uh, especially Tyler Vela, but typical Calvinists. But the funny thing is that I had a conversation, a conversation with Bart Ehrman, Greek scholar, wrote plenty of uh, books about the Greek New Testament, and he doesn't think that's what's going on in the verse at all. Uh, he says, I don't think uh, that Peter had any real in-depth thoughts about the problems of divine determinism when he's making this statement. That is Bart Ehrman. And so 180 degrees from Tyler Vela claiming that the Greek means his reading is true. Calvinists, uh, they're liars, they're dishonest, and they're not good people. But we're going to let this uh, point play out because that's not that's not the subject of today's episode. subject of today's episode is showing Calvinists do not believe their own theology. And you see that because of the disconnect in how they act and what they say, what they say their theology is, and how they act, behave, and even other things that they say, they do not believe their own theology. Yeah, so when I was a Calvinist, I would argue the exact same way. Um, and, and, I, and I would, I would, you know, and, and this was probably a mistake at 
that time it was but i would say well if there's no freedom here then there's no freedom anywhere now that's that's quite a jump right right but that's what i would do at the time and uh again i would say even if they're right about that passage it doesn't notice that fallacy of composition calvinists think if they point to one thing that's been predestined in the bible that means all things are predestined that's that's the wrong way to go about it uh usually the person who's making the more universal a claim they have to defend against counterexamples. They can't just point one or two data points of their claim being being verified. And what what's of more interest is those counterexamples. Times where God says, "Oh, I didn't plan that. I didn't expect that." is more interesting to the claim that God controls all things than one instance of God controlling one thing. Their their mindset's reversed. It's 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 a cult. Their mindset is reversed. They are they are desperate for evidence, and so they they reverse the functions of logic. They use use these fallacies, the fallacy of composition in this case. I mean that exhaustive determinism or exhaustive divine determinism is true. That's a much uh, bigger claim to make and defend. Uh, you can point out one instance of determinism and another instance of determinism, and Many more. That doesn't mean exhaustive divine determinism is true. And like I said, I, I, I offered a couple arguments showing that, man, if you're going to rationally conclude that Calvinism is the best explanation or that Calvinism is true, then you have to have libertarian freedom to do that. And so, uh, so there's now you have to now they have to show why libertarian freedom isn't uh, required to do that. And uh, I don't think they can. But with that said, back to that verse, the Molinist does have an answer because we affirm. It. Okay, so Calvinists trying to convince other people of things proves to us that they don't believe that God predestines all things. When they use means, methods, and arguments to persuade others of their case, they're telling us that they believe in human volition. They don't believe that God has predestined everything to his greatest glory. There's nothing man can do to thwart God's greatest glory. Everything that happens in Calvinism is to God's greatest glory. All right, here we go. This is Law Rod and I talking about Ricky Gantz, and he shows up in the channel. And let's see what kind of interaction happens in this beautiful, beautiful event. It's 15-person audience in this video. And you know, it's crazy because if you look uh, in the chat room, well, Ricky Grantz is actually in the chat, and he says... Praying to God, if it be his will, save you. Then he says also, you believe a lie because you are without the spirit. Now, that's Why would God do that to me? Why did right. God do that? What? That wasn't very nice of God to predestine me to do. Oh, that wasn't nice. Ricky, <laughs> why did God do that to me? And I, it's crazy because he says here, well, you believe. A lie because you, you are without the spirit. Well, no, Ricky, no, no. We believe a lie in your theology because God forced us to believe a lie. Right. <laughs> that that's the actual reason. Anytime you if if you ever have a because and you're Calvinist, if you don't follow it up with God predestined this to happen to maximize His glory, um, you're incorrect. You're you're not you're you're denying your own theology. And so there, there should never, ever, ever be a because unless that because is followed up by God predestined you to do this to his greatest glory. That's the Calvinist answer. Right. And to be honest, Jesus is the word. We're not mocking God. We're, we're actually mocking uh, Calvinism because it's just not correct. And it's in Calvinism, we are talking to God's greatest glory. The things that we've already said maximizes God's glory, you should be praising us. You should be happy with God's maximal glory. <laughs> why would, why, who are you, oh man, to criticize God? Ricky, Ricky, what you doing? Why are you criticizing God? <laughs> All right, so we'll, we'll kind of cut off there, but uh, we, we see a disconnect in Calvinists, what they say their theology is, and their actions. They talk as if all things are predestined for God's greatest glory. Man has no volition. We must do. There's, there's no secret thoughts in our heart that God has not directed, according to Calvin. Uh, everything is to God's greatest glory. 
Yet they'll criticize things that have happened in the past, things that God has predestined for his greatest glory. They will criticize God's greatest glory. They'll also criticize us for not doing or saying or believing the things that they want us to. Uh, They will talk about praying for us as if they think prayer is effectual, as if they don't actually believe their statement that prayer changes us and not God. Uh, they, They act, behave, they pray, they talk to us as if everyone is volitional creatures, rational, functioning, autonomous human beings. And then they'll turn to their theology and they'll say, hey, I'm trying to convince you that you have no free will. Trying to convince someone that they have no free will is, in fact, an implicit admission that you believe the person has free will. As pointed out in the Braxton Hunter video, uh, as we point out here, if he's praying for God to do something for us, that assumes uh, chance. It, 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 it uh, assumes that God can do new things, that God can uh, function, reason, discuss with us. If they criticize the past, they're criticizing what they say is God's greatest glory. They don't actually believe the things that they're saying. Their theology is not a practical theology. And what I mean by that, and I point that out in this uh, LaRon video, is what I mean by that is a practical theology is one in which uh, gives you things by which you can live by, how you can function and act. And their Calvinist theology does not give them that. Fatalism. A consistent Calvinist is someone like Stonewall Jackson who rides around a horse during battle because he thinks God guides all bullets. That is a consistent Calvinist. You don't see those Calvinists. They they hardly exist. Where are the strong Calvinists who actually believe their own theology? Instead, you got people like Ricky Yantz saying, criticizing things that people have already said, things that God predestined to his greatest glory, he thinks are dishonoring God. He thinks uh, uh, somehow defame God as if those things weren't said for God's maximal glory. They do not believe their own theology. Anytime you interact with these people, they will argue with you. They will argue with beings that they think are predestined, whose thoughts are controlled by God for time eternity. They'll try to convince you that they are right and whatever you've been predestined to believe is wrong. This is their mindset. And they'll make little excuses. Well, how do you know that I wasn't predestined to argue this way to you in order to try to uh, help this cause chain of events to get you to change? Uh, Okay, that's uh, that's very convoluted and and not very helpful. But don't criticize the past. Uh, Criticizing the past in any detail is an implicit admission that you... Either either you believe that uh, God was wrong in what he did for his greatest glory, or or you, d- you don't actually believe that the entire past is for God's greatest glory. The, the God's predestined actions that he predestined from time eternal were not good. It's a criticism of God, or, or you're not believing God. One of the two options. Calvinists have a huge disconnect in their actions, what they say and do, how they interact with people, and what they claim their theology is. They do not believe their own theology. And why should I? Why should I believe Calvinism if Calvinists do not believe Calvinism? Calvinists do not believe Calvinism. Why should I believe Calvinism? Anyways, uh, thanks for that little uh, little uh, bit of time critiquing Calvinism. I-, I need to pull out some more references. We need to talk about Calvin's ideas of God's purpose in creation, what the goal is. Because like the Molinists, they think that the the existing world is the greatest world possible. And in Calvinism, since God can't gain anything to himself, it's a reflection. It doesn't actually bestow glory to God. It reflects glory, God's glory, maximally, not gaining anything to God. That's their ideas. But we'll discuss those in further episodes. Thank you for listening. Start a thread on the God is Open Facebook page or ask questions below in the YouTube comments. All right, bye.